behind the cape. Let's talk about, oh, we'll start off right here. So Gray sent me a DM uh, Friday, I think. My days are all mixed together because of what happened on Thursday. So don't hold that against what me. What happened on Thursday? We're going over that in W's and L's. Oh. We're, not, we're not doing that yet. Didn't know what you were talking about. Anyway, so yeah, he sent me a DM. And apparently Marvel has gone ahead and fired all the producers and writers who can be seen as activists or the, the one word that we don't use on this channel anymore. Yeah. And apparently sure. Lucasfilm is just already like they're done for like anything that comes out of Lucasfilm is just going to be shit. Feels like a virtue signal. Feels like a, Hey, hey we really got things under control. And if they really did that, then, then good on them. I hope they, you know, they didn't stop there and they actually went into the, the writer's room in the, uh, in the comic book sector and, and did the same. What's my level of confidence that they actually rooted out all of the issue? Ah. The guy cool. who allowed it to get this bad is still at the helm. So that lets you know what I think about the, the prospect going forward. True, true. This is according to Chris Gore. He was on the Critical Drinkers podcast. Mm. Uh, I've never heard of them, but that's not saying much. No, I know the Critical Drinker. I don't know Chris Gore exactly, but I, I know the Critical Drinker. Gotcha. Yeah, it was a uh, you know live stream, a bunch of people on it, and uh, he was just like, "Yeah, I've got word from Marvel that, or you know, one of his sources that supposedly they just did away with." See, me. the only reason why I didn't jump all over it is I feel like that's the type of thing that like the trades would be all over. But then again, Disney owns the trades, so you know, don't yeah. expect to see Variety or or, or Insider, uh, Hollywood Insider, kind of. Bucking them, the House of Mouse. But then again, there has been times over the last couple of years where they have. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what comes of it. I mean, the, the, the proof's going to be in the pudding. Yeah. And if everybody's too apathetic towards what's already been made with Agatha and Wonder Man and... You know, eyes of Wakanda. Eyes of Wakanda. The Eyes of Wakanda! I'm excited about it. No, you got to do it over your eyes. Gotta, right. You got to do it over because it's the eyes of what you get it, it. You right? It. It. But um, yeah, no. Uh, is it even going to matter if they're already too apathetic towards what you are putting out? That was kind of my read of the Robert Downey Jr. thing. It was like very meh. It's like meh, and I don't think meh is where you want to be. I think you'd much rather be in in rage mode than meh. Meh is I'll, I'll stay at home and watch it when it comes on Disney Plus. That that's. I, I hate this. I may just go buy a ticket to hate on it. A lot of crazy people out there. Yeah, there are. But meh, meh means I'm ignoring you. Meh is strange world. Mm. That's meh. Yeah. They don't want meh. Facts. Speaking of RDJ, he is getting paid more than 80 M's for the next two Avengers films. It, it, it craziness. A absolute madness. It makes you scratch your head because then they're like, oh, we don't want to get these... These big name, you know, household name actors to start up a franchises with, you know, with Fantastic Four and M MCU or with X Men. You want to get smaller, lo lo lesser known actors, but then you'll pay, you'll pay Robert Downey Jr. eighty million to pay a flagship villain, even though he was the flagship hero of the first three phases of your, your yeah, because they're desperate. Your universe here. It feels desperate. I don't know. There are people who think this is going to go really well. There are people uh, yeah. who don't think it's going to go very well. I'm going to put myself in the objective seat and just kind of uh, see how it all plays out. It feels more, it feels creatively bankrupt, though. It does. It feels like we didn't have anywhere else to go, and this was the closest thing we had to a guarantee. Yeah. That's what it felt like. For sure. It also feels like they never really had a cohesive plan to make Secret Wars happen. Because you, you would think that this would be a seismic shift to how everything was going to come together in Secret Wars. But Secret Wars hasn't budged. Like, placement-wise, in terms of when it's going to come out. It hasn't budged. It right. hasn't been renamed. We're not scrapping the concept. Nope. Still going to Secret Wars, just different villain. Well, that's how you know they didn't really have any of this. Have, have sure anything point. concrete. Yeah. 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 That's disappointing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that... My Time to Shine Hello, a uh, Reddit uh, influencer for Marvel, or not for Marvel, but... You know, a Marvel, Marvel scooper. 
uh, claims to have the Kang arc. Well, let's see here. Let's read up. My time to shine hello is a crazy long name. It is pretty long. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read through this. In this film, the TVA began gathering, and this is the, the proposed Kang Dynasty film. This is what it would have been about. So in this film, the TVA began gathering an anchor, an, gathering anchor beings across the multiverse, believing they are the only ones powerful enough to defeat the Council of Kings. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield were uh, the anchor beings for their respective realities, while Tom Holland, Spider-Man, served as an anchor being for 616. The movie was intended to be a to be smaller in scope. Jesus, do they need any more smaller in scope? <laughs> uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, I lost my spot. Compared to Secret Wars, focusing more on Holland's Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, and other actors like Nick Cage's Ghost Rider. Okay, so yeah, this again feels like a nostalgia bust. Like, yeah. That feels like a nostalgia bus. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. So far, so good. I, I, I like that. I like where we're going. Nick Cage's Ghost Rider is a little random, but... No, you like that. That's cool. The plan was for all of them to ultimately fail, leading to the collapse of the multiverse and King's creation of Battle World. Oh, this, they're just going to do the same thing. Yep. Sounds like it. Literally, just going to do the same thing. Instead Nobody's of King, gonna it's going to be Doom. But then what's the pending... No pun intended. What is the pending Doom... With Doom, where it was the Council of Kings with Kang. Like, what? what is his extra... Did he kidnap Galactus from the... From from the from the, the Fantastic Four universe that's getting ready to pop in in the Fantastic Four movie? And then brought him to the 616. And now we have to come together to defeat Doom and Galactus. And again, how do you explain away know. all of the Kang shit? I, I don't know, bro. Now. Let's just keep reading. Uh, collapse. Blah, 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 blah. The plan was them for them to ultimately fail, leading to the collapse of the multiverse and Kang's creation of Battle World. This would then set the stage for Secret Wars, where other MCU characters and additional multiverse figures could converge on Battle World. So it'd be a, a huge amalgamation of characters, old and new, just in Battle World. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like they could probably do a lot of the same. It's they just now, will. what is the what is the pending threat that we need to coalesce to try and beat Doom? Like, just him himself? Because it feels like they should be over to overpower him just kind of like through attrition with the guys that they got. So then it's got to be some other either secondary or primary villain working with Doom to kind of drive all of this. It's going to be Kang off screen. Kang off screen is crazy. <laughs> Kang off screen is crazy. That's that's where we're not going to go. Yeah, Kang said he was uh, working on some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Robinson was good. So what's this mean? Less black castings or less supporting character for black castings? We're talking about Kang? I'm assuming the first thing we talked about. With the uh, producers and writers that got fired. Oh, I don't know. That's an interesting question. It's an interesting question. Um, so I don't think that black castings in terms of quantity was necessarily the problem. I know Chill probably connect with that one. I think the the spaces we were seen in kind of was the the problem, at least for me. Or the roles they were asking us to fill. If we could just get back to a very basic level of, hey, there are black characters here that we haven't touched or done anything with. We have black actors that we would like to just get on the screen. Let's just do the simple thing and have black people play black people. Seems very simple, very straightforward. Would honestly solve a lot of problems for both sides of that argument. The super anti-woke and the, uh, you know, identity politics driven faux activism side would, would serve them both because you're still getting your faces that you look for. Uh, you know, the, the faux activists can't discern what the difference between the two are. Therefore, if we give them the better version, they won't know that they are getting anything different. So they're served. 
And then the crazy anti-woke crowd doesn't really have a leg to stand on now because then they'd actually have to come out and say, we don't want to see black characters on screen, whether they're canonized or not. That we, we know that that's most of their problems in general, but it would force them to have to just say that out loud and make it clear instead of just raving about anything that's not straight white male. So, yeah, I, I think there is some, um, you know, some potential for good there if they actually did what they claim they did. Um, but then again, we still have to never forget that the, the head of that snake is still there. Still there. I don't think any of that would have went down without Kevin's approval. So we'll see how it goes going forward. Uh, Ryan Reynolds cleared Wesley Snipes with Marvel, and he was the driver to get him in the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine. So I think a lot of the conventional wisdom on Blade Trinity was that Wesley Snipes hated Ryan Reynolds. Seems like maybe they were trying to move Hannibal King in the position uh, to replace Blade. Um, I don't know how how true that is, but it does seem that they were at least kind of in a meta way playing on that in some of the conversations in Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, I thought it was interesting to hear him say that not only did Ryan Reynolds call him to set up the cameo, but also got it cleared with Marvel. Um from Marvel's side of things, though, it just continues to bewilder me how much leeway they gave them with Blade, considering what's going on with their own Blade project. Like, I, I, I don't know what you could have said to Ryan or, or Wesley to try to maybe rein it in. Not that it, it, it was it was terrible, but the jokes and then even just the, the fact that we are seeing the OG Blade before the new Blade, seeing as how this movie, Deadpool and Wolverine, the concept of it wasn't even solidified when they announced Blade Two back in 2019. Ago. Like, there was no Deadpool and Wolverine. It was just Deadpool 3, the concept of Deadpool 3. So you're meaning we can create a whole nother Deadpool, Bring in the old Blade to cameo in it before we can even get a first look, a trailer, anything from Blade? At this point, is that really a surprise? It, it just I mean, it probably would have been early on, but now... It just kind of continues it. to highlight the, the misstep. Like, it, it just makes it bigger and bigger. And I didn't think that they would want to exacerbate that any more than they already have. Makes sense. Uh... Human trafficking sting at San Diego Comic-Con. I guess they found... Let me see. Authorities arrested 14 people and rescued 10 victims, including a 16-year-old during an undercover human trafficking sting. Yo, this shit went super quiet. Super quiet. Almost as much as the RNC breaking grinder when they had their convention. Breaking what? Grinder. You know that when the RNC was in town, they crashed the grinder app? That's crazy. No, I it, it's insane. That. And it went kind of quietly all, all, off to the left with all the other craziness that you was mean going the on. The servers were loaded so much from that all the, the activity. app crashed. That the app crashed. The where party of family. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, sim similarly as embarrassing, there was a, a, a giant human trafficking sting at SDCC. Um, not a whole lot of info coming out as to, to who, where they were, were any employees of any studios involved. It's just a lot of questions I have in, in, in that instance, especially since, it, again, not a lot of people talking about it either. No, not at all, which is crazy. I mean, that's a huge number of people getting uh, brought in. So, and I would assume that that would impact SDCC next year. Yeah, I, I would hope that they wouldn't. Um, like it doesn't start to to put a a a damper on the a event. damper on not just SDCC but like any type of con events. You know what I mean? Like I I would hate to see that become like a a stigma. That's what I'm looking for. Sure. 
a stigma sure. around around cons or, or anything like that. No, I think that just happens at big events from time to time because there's just so many people. So many people about, yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like something like that happened at the Arnold once. Am I crazy? At the Classic? Yeah. I don't remember if it did. I don't know. I feel like I heard something like that. Maybe I'm just putting stuff out there that probably shouldn't be out there. <laughs> Maybe I just lied on Arnold. Um, okay. Also happening quietly, but not to the same extent as this. Inside Out 2 is in the top 10 highest grossing films of all time with 1.5 billion. I haven't even seen any advertising, me personally, for it. So. I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, it's a rare victory for Pixar. Good timing, too. It's good to have some of those movies, you know, kind of compound themselves. So they've got a a billion dollar tracker in, in Deadpool and Wolverine. They've got a billion and counting and in, in with uh, Inside Out too. Um, they need to start putting, you know, three, four or five of these together at a time. Especially with some of the bigger titles that they got going on. Only problem is, is that we're, we're doing the I am not very creative wheel again over and over again. It's. Moana 2 and Toy Story 5 and uh, 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 whatever the newest. Are they yeah, making a Toy Story 5 right they now? They are making a Toy Story 5. Um, whatever live action CGI mess they got going on in the live action sector. like Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. You're just going to keep running back the classics. and but, but eventually they don't become classic. They just kind of become mundane. Accurate. Very meh. Uh, okay, let's talk about some future stuff coming up. Uh, not the rapper. Robert Kirkman says they are looking to make seven to eight seasons of Invincible, which will take them supposedly throughout uh, the comic book, uh, which I don't know if they're looking to do even more after that or what, but it should be interesting to see at least. So basically we haven't even scratched the surface of what we're going to be getting from Invincible. Was this a season two? We just finished season two? Yeah. Or is this the, the hiatus from season two? Or did we get a full season? No, we got a full season. Yeah, we, we already that. took the break, yeah. yeah. So going into season three, talking about seven or eight seasons? Well, we haven't seen the thing yet, so. We haven't seen what? The thing that happens in Invincible. The thing that I'm not sure. They, they have to. They have to. Right, chat? Is it a big thing? Like, is it, I'm, okay, uh, is it something that, like, absolutely needs to happen in the story? It happened in or the is it just book. outrageous to you and you're waiting to see it? It's pretty outrageous. But, uh, I don't know what I can say. Full comics. Okay. Well, luckily you, the chat doesn't seem to know what I'm talking about now. But Okay. Um, Inside Out 2. Oh, Squid Game. Season 2 coming December 26th. And the final season is coming sometime in 2025. Hopefully neither one of these seasons ends like the last season because that was kind of disappointing. Uh, what, what were we talking about? Now? Squid Game. You didn't like the ending, the first uh, ending of the first season. No. No. Like the very ending. You talking about the old guy end up being spoiling? the one who ran? Are we spoiling. If you haven't seen season <laughs> one of Squid Game, you don't give a shit about season season two. All right, I've, I've given y'all enough time. Yeah, more than enough time. <laughs> for that one if uh so you're talking about where the old dude ends up being the one who was running the game no That's i'm not. just talking about the fact that he ends up joining the game all over again well because he's didn't he like get Don't somebody get daughter, care man. about his daughter that's who they they was threatening when he was walking th through the airport he had we was talking to his daughter and then they called him he probably think they gonna fucking go get her if he don't do it mm, okay it's been too long since I've seen it. I just know I didn't like it. But, yeah. I probably would have took my daughter and moved to America. I feel like though. at the time I was thinking, nah, bro, go get your daughter. Don't play the game again. I'm just glad I get to see dude not being an acolyte ever again. Oh, well, in case they... Well, no, he's dead. So, yeah, I don't ever have to watch him in acolyte ever again. Which one was an acolyte? S Song You Jade. S Song, Song You Jade. Soul. The know. Asian Jedi. Did you not watch any episodes of Acolyte? No. Didn't see a promotional poster? No. Didn't even see like a preview, uh, a commercial on TV? No. Well, I don't see Disney Plus commercials, commercials? very often. Me personally. 
I feel like I don't. Okay. And then I'm not actively watching Disney Plus at all because I don't support them. So. Yeah, you got it, bro. Uh, okay. <laughs> ben Affleck playing Hulk Hogan. Holy shit. Yes, Ben Affleck is playing Hulk Hogan in a movie called Gawker, and it's about that website that uh, s- supposedly sold his stole and sold his uh, his sex tape. This should be interesting. That apparently he had no idea about. I wonder how many n bombs uh, Affleck's going to get to drop. He is from Boston, is he not? Oh, not saying that Ben Affleck wants to say the n word. I'm just saying to truly capture the nature of Hulk Hogan. I'm not you have to say the N word. He doesn't want to say it. Who knows? I mean he may be one of those good Bostoners. One of those good Bostoners, you know? The ones that park cars down at the Hobbit Yacht. Yeah, he could be. I don't know if he wants to say it, but I feel like a lot of people from Boston want to say it. And do say so whenever they get the chance to. I think some of his friends say it. Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg absolutely say it. I don't. I don't know about. I don't know about Ben. Ben is Ben is a little bit. He cooler. He's a, he's all right. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah maybe. I mean, but they, you know, I always get spurned when I think that about certain white exactly. gentlemen. Exactly. So. They always have something in the closet. There's usually something there. And for Ben Affleck, it could be his N-word usage. Josh sees True Social commercials. That's crazy. You on True Social? I am not on True Social. True Social is crazy. What's up, Josh and Marcus? Do you think Henry Cavill would have been a better casting as Doctor Doom? Maybe not Doctor Doom. Cavill's supposed to be Wolverine. Now that shit I love. Don't care that he's like 6'5 and jacked and he'd probably be a better Scott. Actually, I he probably would be a better Scott. I want Henry Cavill as Wolverine. Inject that shit into my veins, brother. That shit looked awesome. Of all the variants that I saw... Okay, again, anyways, cover your ears for a second. For all the variants that I saw in Deadpool and Wolverine, Henry Cavill was definitely the best Wolverine der- variant. By far. By far. Is My it? favorite. Yeah. Okay, cool. I feel like you said another joke about me, but... Um, dude that I wanted to play, um, Dr. Doom was, um... Peaky Blinders? Yes! Dude from Oppenheimer. Yep. That's who I wanted to play Doom. Uh, Murphy. Uh, Either him or Mads Mikkelsen. I could have seen Mads Mikkelsen mm. as Doom as well. I can see that too. J-Lo gave Please don't get on my back about Romani characters. I, what's the name? Uh, uh, Natalie Portman is Romani. So if, if that if that is the if that's the bar of melanation that needed to happen for that character, I think that Mads Mikkelsen would do just fine. Is it is it Killian Murphy? Is that how you pronounce it? The Peaky Blinders dude? Yeah. Sure. Have I ever heard his name said? Killian sounds right. I think it's Killian. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, last thing I believe. Sounds Scottish. Yeah. Uh, Evil Dead animated series in the works. Bruce Campbell to voice Ash Williams because. Get out of here! Natalie Portman is Israeli. I did not know that either. All right, somebody got to look that up for me. Somebody got to look that shit up for me. I guess that's me. Is she really Israeli? I'll look it up while you talk about Evil Dead animated series. Oh, yeah, the Evil Dead animated series. She is Israeli. Again, melanation levels. That's European. According to a, a, a study done by uh, Columbia University. Anyways. She was born in Jerusalem. Was she? European genetics. Pure bread is crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. <Yeah. laughs> oh boy, where were we? What were we even talking about? Evil Dead the animated Evil Dead. series. Yeah. So the guy who plays Ash is actually going to be the voice of Ash in the animated series. So check and check there. Um, concept wise, there are a lot of things I think I think you could do with the Evil Dead series in an animated space. Um, that usually you probably want to reserve for a movie 
if you were doing it in the in the live action. I don't think this would have gone over as well as like a a mini series or anything like that. Animated wise, though, they can do some things. Kind of following on the the momentum of shows like uh, 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 Invincible and X Men '97, and most recently Cape Crusader on Prime. Um, there has been a big push for animation, so. I can see this doing well. Becoming a lot more, it's beginning to be taken a lot more serious. It's a lot more appealing to the adult demographic, the 18, 25, 25, 35. You know, there are older demographics now paying attention to animation where they weren't necessarily doing so before. So that's cool. It's cool. Should have some some decent success if it's it's good. It's quality. Absolutely. Black Panther, I have not seen Deadpool and Wolverine because I'm waiting for the bootlegs because I no longer support Marvel. He said Hollywood won't Good let quality. Bruce Campbell move on from Ash Williams. You you could have watched it by now if you wanted to see it. And no, I could have because I could have watched the shit quality. But is it that they won't watching... let him move on, Tony Robinson, or d- does he want to? Because I mean, even in the 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 Sam Raimi cameos, he's basically just evil dead guy selling pizza. So. I don't know if it's if that he doesn't want to get away from it or or they won't let him. That would probably be an interesting question for him if he's ever interviewed by somebody. I can't watch uh, Deadpool and Wolverine because I've been watching Supercell. 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 Not true, but. I was about to say, you I just literally to... only watched <laughs> Supercell today. I just wanted to say Supercell. All right. Any other uh, things that we need to talk about during Behind the Cape? Fuck that, bro. Let's talk about Supercell. Men's them wants to do W's and L's, yeah? Men's them want to do nothing. Yo. Men's them do what I say. Yo. Or man's Man's down. Men's do what I say or man's down. Nah, I'm good. Tell your brethren I said wagwan. 